टू वन वी आर लाइव सर uh good afternoon or good evening everybody who has logged on to the call and if you have logged on from another part of the world then it may be morning or afternoon there um first of all thank you all so much for joining this uh, very very exciting uh youtube facebook live session uh that we are having uh, courtesy atal innovation mission and uh, i hope every one of you who have logged on to the call are safe and sound and healthy uh following the covid 19 safety practices that is being advocated both by the governments or by the ministries of health uh, in your respective regions or by your organizations uh, we are indeed in uh, uh, unprecedented times of this particular crisis something that none of us expected to uh, experience in our lifetime at least i didn't and uh, we are um, in the grips of uh, several new experiences uh, that we never thought was possible Uh, countries are in a lockdown mode uh, many of the cities and states in many countries are still in a lockdown mode and, and have been like that for the last several months um we are also having disruption in supply chain across the con- across countries within the country and in between countries uh, we are a globally connected economy uh, but uh, this global dependency has also brought in its wake uh, the great importance of being connected and remaining connected and Uh, the sort of challenges that have been thrown up because of the covid-19 crisis has actually given rise to completely new thinking about what is going to be the way forward and one thing is clear in all of this innovation entrepreneurship creative thinking original thinking reimagining the world uh, reimagining a new economic order reimagining uh, the solutions to many of the problems that have come up as a result of this crisis is going to become key and uh, we are going to have a whole lot of things um you know that is going to get initiated in every country because of this uh just to introduce myself my name is ramanan i am the mission director of atal innovation mission the atal innovation mission was formed 3 uh, years ago uh, and it was set up by the uh, niti aayog the national institution for transforming india and it is uh, a brainchild of niti aayog and the honorable prime minister the whole idea is how do you create and promote an ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship across the length and breadth of our country uh, india is a country with 1.3 billion people we have 1.4 million schools uh, we have 10500 engineering and related institutions we have more than 39000 colleges uh, we have 150 million young students who are going to be entering into the workplace over the next 5 to 10 years we have 65% of our country under 35 years old so we have what they call as the demographic dividend which is an envy of many a country across the world now how do you ensure that this demographic dividend becomes a great advantage for the growth of a nation from a socio economic point of view and how do you leverage it in a changing world a world which is rapidly changing due to technology a world in which technology is becoming advanced affordable accessible and available uh, you have new technologies that is revolutionizing and enabling you to reimagine new solutions whether it is 3d printing robotics iot devices miniaturized electronics uh, nanotechnology super computing uh, technologies 5g technologies they are all reshaping the world there is no aspect they are changing the way you are experiencing the world and they are changing the way the world is experiencing you so in light of the fact that we have a fast changing a uh, technological environment we have a demographic dividend and india is also one of the fastest growing economies of the world uh, or has been over the last couple of years how do we bring all of this together to drive an ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship because india has always been uh, you know very good in innovation they have it is not that it was not that our our indian innovators uh, have excelled whenever they have gone to to the us to uk to france or to europe uh they have uh, occupied the highest levels uh, possible in the corporate sector in the academic sector in the private sector or even in the governments uh, you have tenadala heading microsoft asundar pichai heading google uh, you have uh, uh, shantanu narayan heading adobe uh, you have several indians leading in major universities and the dean of major universities whether it is harvard or or um, uh, many other universities in the united states so when but all of them who have gone abroad and found that ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship have been able to create an impact and have been able to realize their full potential 
And that is why the Atal Innovation Mission was created, so that we create a similar ecosystem of innovation and entrepreneurship, so that this 1.3 billion people get the advantage of it, and we become a nation of job creators, not just job seekers. India has done extraordinarily well from a job seeking point of view over the last few years. The IT, ITS industry, which has grown to become a $180 billion industry, is primarily become the area of service, knowledge related services for the rest of the world. But now what has brought us here is not going to get us to the next level. And we need a nation of job creators, of innovators, of entrepreneurs, of startups. And so the Atal Innovation Mission has five major initiatives which it has launched. The first being Atal Tinkering Labs. We have launched thousands of tinkering labs at the school level, which will promote a problem solving innovative mindset in the school students across the country by leveraging the latest of technologies as do-it-yourself kits. So you have 3D printers, robotics, IoT, electronics, uh, augmented virtual reality, do-it-yourself kits, using which grade six to grade 12 students are able to create solutions, uh, prototypes of innovations for addressing problems they see in and around the community. The second thing which we have done at the university level is we are launching world-class incubators. And why incubators? Because we are a startup nation. But a startup can succeed only when protected and being enabled to cross the various valleys of death, as they call in the startup life cycle. So the incubators provide valuable mentoring support, venture capital support. Uh, they provide business planning strategy support, access to technology labs, research labs, and so on, so that the startup becomes successful. So we have launched uh, more than 5,000 tinkering labs in schools across the 660 districts of our country. We have launched more than 110 incub 102 incubators across 26 states, and which has fostered more than 1,500 startups in the last couple of years. Uh, in order to ensure that the benefits of innovation reaches the remotest areas of our country, we are setting up Atal community innovation centers. And community innovation centers are so that you are creating innovations and you're leveraging innovations for the benefits of that local community, what that community needs. And it is being set up in tier two, tier three, uh, unserved, underserved regions of the country. You see, we have eight tier one cities, so there is not a problem of finding innovative people there or incubators there. But what about the remote areas, whether it is uh, Pondicherry, whether it is Coimbatore, Tirupur, whether it is the Northeast in Sikkim or in uh, Meghalaya or in Jammu and Kashmir? How do we ensure that the benefits of innovation reaches across to that level of the community and in areas that that community needs? And how do we create job innovation and job creation capabilities in every nook and corner of our country? And therefore, these other community innovation centers are being set up. And in order to promote products and solutions, creation of products, services, and solutions for challenges that we have in our country, we are launched what are known as Athil New India Challenges and Arise Challenges. Arise is applied research and innovation for small enterprises, which is targeted for the MSM industry. And, any, uh, and uh, Athil New India Challenges are targeted for uh, any solutions which we work with the ministries. Now, these are important because what we need are solutions which will have societal impact and economic impact. And in order to support all of this, we have created a network, one of the largest networks of mentors uh, anywhere in the world, voluntary uh, mentors. More than 10,000 mentors have registered with us and 5,000 of them have been allocated to our tinkering labs, incubators, uh, startups and so on, so that they bring the benefit of their knowledge their capability, their professional experience to bear upon all these uh, units that they can support, the young innovators whom they can support. So this is the situation and what we need, the COVID-19 crisis has shown that at no other point in time in history has the demand for innovation, the demand for entrepreneurship, the demand for startups been more than at this point in time. And so I'm delighted to introduce Navi Raju, Navi Raju is an international innovator. He is a scholar. Uh, he has had a fantastic uh, journey, a fascinating journey. Uh, I, I, he just shared with me a little bit of his journey, but I am sure all of you who are logged on to this call would be very interested in knowing his own journey, innovation journey. He is an Indo-French American innovator. So he has been he has worked, studied in all of these places. Uh, he is also the author of three books. Uh, on frugal one on frugal innovation, one on Jugaad, uh, which we all try to, you know, every one of you is familiar with Jugaad, and Jugaad is all about um, very practical innovations being done uh, at, at, um, at a grassroots level, uh, which helps 
our people in various communities to be able to solve a particular problem. And he's also written a book on smart to wise. We are delighted to have Navi here. Uh, he's a speaker on tech talks. He is uh, he is an um, uh, advisor to companies and and so on. And he is also uh, one thing that defines him is he is constantly learning about new things and trying to apply them not only to his own life but uh, to all the people with whom he is in touch with. So Navi, thank you so much for joining us on this particular YouTube session. Uh, this is part of what we call as Tinker from Home modules launched by Atal Innovation Mission over the last six, uh, uh, six or eight weeks. Uh, it has been a tremendous response. We have launched many learning modules through this Tinker from Home modules. We have launched modules on artificial intelligence, game development, digital creativity and skills, and 3D design. And the students have lapped it up. And not only the students, but also the teachers, participants, mentors, they all learn from it. Uh, so we are very interested in knowing your views. But before we start off, do tell us about yourself and your innovation journey. And it is such a fascinating story. So we'd be delighted if you can share a little bit of it. Sure. Uh, so uh, first of all, I'm uh, delighted to be here. I just want to check you can all hear me properly. So um, yes. yes, perfect. Uh, uh, thanks, Raman, for uh, hosting me today. And um, I was very uh, thrilled to also get the background on the Atal mission. Uh, sounds like it's a very timely initiative in India. And uh, so I, uh, in terms of background, I grew up in Pondicherry uh, that you mentioned. Um, I went to a French medium school and, um, and then after finishing my high school, I went to France to complete my higher education. And um, so my studies actually used to be about uh, what they call uh, MIS, Management Information Systems, which is really a blend of computer science and uh, business. And uh, that was actually a godsend because I of technology and business. So the studies of uh, MIS was a way to bridge these two worlds. And then after finishing my master's degree in uh, 95, I went to Canada, uh, worked for IBM for a while there, um, and then uh, went to Singapore and Thailand in the mid 90s, uh, because we were talking at the time about the East Asian miracle. So I wanted to go, uh, you know, <laughs> in the field to see what's happening in Southeast Asia. I did that for three years, um, then came to the US in uh, 99 and uh, joined a company called uh, Forrester Research, uh, which is a technology research firm. Um, spent uh, 10 years uh, studying uh, major technology trends and particularly looking at how technology is going to transform uh, businesses. Uh, this was the beginning of the internet, so we were convinced that internet is going to radically change uh, how companies uh, do business. And at that time, I was beginning, being an Indian, uh, begin to look at what's happening uh, in India around innovation. And uh, as you know very well, since you work for uh, Tata Consultancy, we had this first wave of IT service companies, uh, which begin to make a mark in the global scene. And uh, the West, of course, uh, was primarily looking at India as a source of cheap labor for IT services. But I knew that there was something else happening. So I came to uh, interact with a lot of IT companies in India and the, the first wave of uh, uh, startups in India in the early 2000s. And I realized that there was a lot of innovation happening already in India, but the, the Western world didn't really acknowledge that. So I begin writing a lot about that uh, reports on how India is emerging as an innovation superpower in them. This is like 15 years ago uh, when people really didn't believe it uh, because everybody was focusing on China at that time. Uh, India was not really accepted as a global player. Um, and then that passion led me to go to Cambridge University uh, 12 years ago to set up a research center at the Judge Business School at Cambridge University that uh, was, uh, uh, the mission was to study uh, the rise of India as a source of innovation and how India can uh, teach the rest of the world new ways of innovating and uh, leading. And so I did that a couple of years. And then uh, eight years ago, I decided to return to the US and uh, I lived in Silicon Valley for uh, almost uh, 13 years. And then I got tired of Silicon Valley. I know that everybody are
I'm back. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think something is going on probably. Uh, let me, uh, let's <laughs> probably some technical glitch here. Um, so, yes, and then uh, I left. I'm just talking about uh, you had just uh, gone to Silicon Valley, so you can continue. Talking. Right. Yes. So, I left Silicon Valley uh, last year to come live in New York uh, because I kind of got tired of the Silicon Valley culture, which was very oriented towards, of course, money, but also the kind of innovation that we were producing uh, seemed to be uh, technologically fantastic, um, but it, I didn't see what the social impact was. So there was a kind of a dissatisfaction with what was happening in Silicon Valley. So, so I'm now living in New York, and of course I came here to New York at the time when the COVID crisis, you know, uh, emerged. So it was interesting also to see, uh, and we'll talk about, I'm sure, uh, how during this crisis uh, we actually saw old kind of innovation happening, right? As you mentioned earlier, but including the U.S., right? People really doing this kind of jugad and frugal innovation. Uh, because the existing system, right, can handle this crisis. Uh, so it was amazing to see also what's going on, um, you know, here in, in, in the New York area. So, so that's kind of, you know, so I, I share that background because as you can see, my, my career path has been, you know, very unpredictable and non-linear uh, because I, you know, I started in IT, then got into something else like technology research, then went into academia, uh, in Thailand, I worked in the public sector. Um, so I think that's also what I encourage young people listening is that, uh, you know, don't lock yourself into a very deterministic career path uh, because the world is so unpredictable. Uh, you know, at, at Berkeley University, they uh, found that, uh, you know, within six years, everything you learn becomes obsolete. <laughs> so, so it's very important that, you know, you have this curiosity and the willingness to unlearn, relearn continuously as the world keeps changing and, and come up with, you know, new ways to adapt to, uh, you know, a dynamic reality. So it's fascinating, um, uh, Navi, and uh, what I can say is definitely, uh, you know, you have been one who have welcomed change. Uh, in your life, whether it is in your career path or in the location that you are working and so on. And that has given you a rich, uh, I would say, a tapestry of experiences uh, and knowledge that you gain by uh, working in different environments, uh, in different uh, career positions, as well as uh, it has given you the opportunity to uh, even write books. Now, in all of this, I am um, sure uh, you have written three books now. And uh, in the process, all of them are related to innovation in some manner. Frugal and Jogad innovation, of course, are related to innovation. Uh, you'd have met a number of very interesting innovators, grassroots innovators, uh, people who are making a difference. Uh, what is your observation? And, and you have interacted with them, interviewed them. Uh, is there some observation that you have about uh, some common traits that innovators have? and which is something that people can learn from and benefit all the audience. You know, you have young budding innovators right now listening to your call and we want everyone to become a job creator and innovator, you know, unleashing their creative potential. Uh, what are some of the common characteristics and traits that you have seen in very successful grassroots innovators? Sure. Uh, there are uh, four uh, important attributes uh, or I would even say uh, capabilities of these uh, innovators, particularly the grassroots innovators. And these four capabilities, I'm going to list them, but also show them how in today's context, where we see so much unpredictability and certainty, they become really powerful. The first uh, kind of principle, if you like, uh, there are four principles. The first principle is the ability to transform adversity into an opportunity. So this is all about resilience. So when you face a problem, right, you know, you don't, you have three options. You can run away from it. Uh, you can try to confront it, right? But there is a third way, which I think is really what Jugad is about, is how do you turn the problem into a solution, right? So like in martial arts, right? How do you turn the adversity to work for you? And a good example of that is uh, Kanak Das uh, was a young man in uh, Assam who got tired of riding his bicycle in his village because they were filled with potholes. So instead of complaining about that, uh, he basically created, you know, is, is a thinker. So he created a device that he attached to his bicycle that basically converts 
the bumps into acceleration energy. So the more bumps in the road, the bike rides faster, right? So that's basically saying that the problem is the solution, right? So you basically turn the problem into an advantage for you. So that's the first principle. How do you transform adversity into an opportunity? It also means that you don't complain. See, that's the thing, right? You don't complain something is broken. You try to fix it or you try to make it work for you. Um, the second important principle, and this is really the heart of what we call frugal innovation, which is the ability to do more and better with less. Because in India, we don't have a lot of resources, but if Probably have to do some jugad here as well <laughs> during this uh, webinar. So, so I, I, so the second principle is actually about you know how do we uh, do more uh, with less, and uh, this is really about uh, figuring out a way to uh, create more value uh, using uh, fewer resources. And uh, here again, we see a lot of uh, amazing uh, innovations uh, out of India. Uh, my favorite one is uh, Dr. Vishal Rao, who is uh, an oncologist uh, by training in Bangalore, uh, who actually uh, does operations uh, for cancer patients who lose their voice. Um, and uh, in, uh, if you want to replace that, the voice box, uh, you can create, a, you can come up with an artificial voice box, which costs about uh, $5,000. Uh, which is expensive for a lot of poor people, right? Will lose their voice. So he came up with um, a device, uh, artificial voice box that cost only one dollar, just one dollar. And what's amazing, the Juga thing is that uh, the inserter used to insert that uh, you know device into the throat. Uh, he actually worked with uh, toy makers uh, in Chanapatna, which is a region in Karnataka where there's a community of artisans who are very good at uh, you know, um, uh, toy making. So he created a device that you know, basically beautifully designed that becomes a, an inserter. So voila, we have a frugal medical device that costs only $1 and brings dignity right, to a lot of poor people who lose their voice after throat cancer. So that's the second principle, do more with less. The third principle, which is important is, you know, it's about thinking and acting flexibly. So that means, you know, asking the question like, you know, why not, right? When you see a problem and, you know, we tend to, uh, we are conditioned to come up with a, a standard solution, but sometimes you have to think outside the box to basically create something completely disruptive. So a good example of that, I have a solution here to show you. Uh, this actually is uh, an incubator for premature babies, you know, and in the West, when they are born, we keep these uh, premature babies in incubators, which cost about $20,000 and require electricity, which is very expensive, as you can imagine, in India. So five students uh, launched a startup in Bangalore called Embrace, which actually rethought completely what is an incubator. This doesn't look like an incubator. In and come up with this you know, simple incubator that keeps the baby at constant temperature for several hours straight. And this simple solution costs only $200, which is 1% of the cost, right, of incubators sold in the West, doesn't require electricity. And uh, this ingenious solution has already saved the lives of 300,000 babies, right? So this shows the amazing societal impact a simple solution can have when you think outside the box. And finally, the fourth important principle uh, I call it follow your heart, which is basically uh, follow your passion and have passion for what you're doing. And you might have seen in the news right now, there's a viral uh, video now uh, going viral. Uh, this is professor, uh, a teacher, chemistry teacher in Pune, uh, Mumita Bhattacharji, uh, who actually uh, decided to teach from home uh, chemistry. And uh, of course she had a chalkboard, but she needed somebody to you know, film her you know, teaching on the on the chalkboard. So she did. She said, "I could have bought a tripod, right? But I decided to apply Juga thinking to create my own makeshift tripod." And she did that. 
and uh, you can Google it and find out about it. It's going viral. But that shows the passion that she has for teaching, right? It's because she loves so much teaching that she's able to, you know, think outside the box to come up with a creative solution, this makeshift tripod to share a knowledge with the students. So these are the four principles I've found among innovators, right? Which is, you know, transforming adversity into opportunity, do more and better with less. And third is about thinking and acting flexibly. And the fourth one is being able to follow your passion. Wonderful, Navi. So, you know, you have very rightly said that how do you, uh, you know, and, and I always say India is a country of a billion people with a million challenges, but the million challenges are million opportunities. So if you start viewing them as opportunities, you're converting adversity into an opportunity and you are seeing, you know, how can I create a solution? And very often, if you're able to transform a problem itself into a solution or a, or a mode of a solution, like the, with the example that you gave, then it becomes uh, much easier. And second is doing more with less is very important. You know, we are a country with 22% uh, still below the poverty line and 44% are agri-economy based and 70% of our country is still in rural villages and so on and so forth. Or, or in the, you know, 600,000 villages are there in our country. And how do we ensure that the solutions become affordable for them? Mm. And that is why doing more with less and making it affordable uh, is very important. And the third point is uh, that you said is uh, how do we ensure that uh, we are able to uh, convert, you know, um, take, take an idea and then transform it into a solution uh, with the passion that is required uh, so that, you know, if, if you don't have that passion, then you will not try to find a solution for the problem. And, uh, and finally, uh, you had mentioned about the uh, need to think laterally, you know, how do we think uh, and act flexibly? That is don't get um, don't become rigid in your thinking be open and and when you're open and and your example actually gave me uh, you know one of the tinkering labs uh, the student wanted to design a device uh, which can go underwater from the from the land and then detect drowned people you know people who have drowned or or if a boat has capsized uh, to be able to quickly go uh, using iot technology some uh, uh, you know um, Doppler effect type of uh, uh, waves being generated and so on. So when when he created the device, he took the help of a cyclist uh, in order to create the gears. You know, they, they, he cycled gears for for the device to be rolled off from the sand into the into the water. And then once it goes into the water, uh, he used plumbing material. You know, our our um, and and uh, he wanted to create plastic uh, tubes so that the, the device can go underwater and then, or it can float to the surface and so on. And when he, when he created this innovation, he took the help of a local cyclist and a local mm -hmm. plumber. Uh, and his mentor guided him on that. He said, you know, I don't know how to solve this problem, but so that's how the Jugaad thing works. You know, you, and like you said that the, they went to the local toy maker and found out how to uh, create that particular device. Now, all of this, you know, you have written on, I'd like you to, Explain what Jugaad is all about. You know, uh, in your world, in your view, having interacted with so many Jugaad innovations, what is Jugaad all about? We are trying, we are setting up Atal Community Innovation Centers across the country so that you can actually convert Jugaad innovations into reliable, robust, scalable, uh, and uh, replicable innovations, right? So is it possible, first of all, to convert, what is Jugaad innovation? And is it possible to convert Jugaad innovation into systemic innovation? And so what are your thoughts on that? Sure. So uh, I, I think, first of all, I want to clarify because I know that the term Jugaad is kind of loaded. Uh, so I uh, would say that uh, there are three kinds of Jugaad. There is a kind of really bad Jugaad. Uh, so not before I go there, Jugaad for me is just ingenuity, right? It's basically ingenuity. We are all born with ingenuity. Uh, if you look at the study done by NASA, uh, they find that uh, kids up to the age of five, they are the best Jugadus because they completely practice lateral thinking, right? Because they don't have conditioned mind. So they can completely think everything. There's no box, right? They don't even have to break a box because there's no box at that age, right? So, so we have this incredible ingenuity 
up to the age of five, genius level, according to NASA. And then by the age of eight, it starts declining, right? People begin to think in a more structured way. So Jugad for me is about ingenuity. It's about being able to think beyond the norms and the traditions and boxes. And of course, there are three kinds of Jugads, as I said, there's a kind of the bad Jugad where you can use ingenuity to break a system, abuse the system. And that's why sometimes we get, you know, uh, criticism against Jugad. And then there is a kind of, I call it a neutral type, you know, or, or kind of the, the acceptable Jugad. And for example, miss call, right? When you do a miss call, that, that's a Jugad because you're basically leveraging an existing system, right? Uh, to extract more value. It's not illegal, it's not unethical. So that's kind of the second category, right? Of, you know, okay, Jugad. And then there's a third Jugad, and we saw right this year worldwide, and, you know, we'll give some examples as well. When the system cannot handle a crisis, right? When the, when the formal system can handle a crisis or is deficient, well, then you need actually this kind of bottom up innovation, right? Where you get different perspectives from different people to quickly adapt, improvise solutions uh, because there's an urgency, right? There's a real urgency, the resources are limited. And if you combine this, comp as you say, these two variables, which is, you know, constraints in terms of resources, and then this urgency to solve the problem, and that's when this disruptive thinking comes out, right? And that's what, you know, Jugad is all about. And so I would say that, uh, you know, instead of thinking Jugad versus systemic, you know, innovation, I want you to look at different way, which is as a spectrum, right? So where uh, Jugad is the fulcrum, right? Jugad is a fulcrum that can support a, a whole swath, the full spectrum of innovation. So on this side of the spectrum, you have what we call low tech kind of innovation. This is like, you know, someone in the village coming up with, you know, like uh, Mansuk Prashapati in Gujarat, who has created a fridge made entirely of clay. Right. It's not super high tech, but it's also very limited in impact in a local level. But that's also Juga thinking. And then this side of the spectrum. Kind of solutions that could be done in a more structured way, but the thinking is still the same. The four principles I talked about apply also here. And in this in this side of the spectrum, one good example would be uh, the example of the uh, Dr. Vishal Rao's, you know, one dollar, you know, artificial voice box that requires, you know, some knowledge of, you know, medicine. But also another great example uh, because uh, in artificial intelligence, uh, India is coming up with great applications. Uh, my favorite one is a company called uh, Algo Serg, uh, launched by a student IIT uh, PhD grad from Mumbai, and uh, he, uh, the solution, what he does is that it automatically converts. 2D images from X-ray devices automatically into 3D images. So that's fabulous because clinics, you talk about tier three, tier four, or you know, tribal areas, they may have X-ray device, but they can't afford to buy an MRI or a, a CT scanner. So this solution automatically converts the 2D images into 3D images. Right. So that's the other side of Jugad, which is really like, you know, applying Jugad to say, you know, how can I cleverly uh, repurpose the 2D data I have to make it 3D data? And this is being used by orthopedic surgeons to simulate virtually uh, bone surgeries before they actually make, you know, the surgery in the physical world better, cheaper. So I would say that you think about Jugad being more a mindset with certain principles. That's the fulcrum. And then on that rest, uh, you know, a full spectrum of ways of uh, innovating from a very low tech, uh, localized way to more high tech structured R&D driven, you know, kind of way that could be scaled up as well. Wonderful. You know, we, we launch uh, in Atal Innovation Mission, uh, we launch what are known as Atal Tinkering Challenges for the school students. And we run what is known as an Atal Tinkering Marathon every year. And you would be amazed to see the type of innovations that come from all these young school students across the country. Uh, last Tinkering Marathon, we ran more than 50,000 students participated and more than 8,000 innovations got cre uh, created, out of which we shortlisted 1,500. And from that, we selected the top 100. And you know, as you said rightly, uh, 
many of the times young minds don't clutter themselves uh, with any limitations in their imagination and give give full expression to it and some of the solutions that have come up are just amazing and uh, similarly you know in our community innovation centers we have been uh, our focus is how do you bring local community innovation which is affordable and accessible uh, for the implementation and here we would also look at jugad innovation and see uh, which of them are applicable in what context and how do you uh, convert the higher end technically replicable innovations and, and apply them elsewhere so uh, we launch uh, new india challenges and we we launch uh, the arise challenges to stimulate such innovation now uh, you you have mentioned about uh, frugal you have written a book on frugal innovation um, india can become very well the global hub for frugal innovation what are your thoughts on it and do you think it is a real possibility and do you think it has applicability uh, you know you have the us and the west which are doing innovations at a different level and you also have in india the need for frugal innovation considering you know our our population our spread uh, the current status of the country and so on so what are your thoughts on that uh, i'm going to apologize but uh, there was a problem technical problem i just relogged in would you mind okay. repeating that question yeah so, so the question is uh, you have been an author you have you are written on frugal innovation uh, and india can well become the global hub for frugal innovation because there is a demand and you know one of the five pillars that, that the honorable prime minister uh, uh, remarked which on which the indian economy and atmanirbhar bharat can be founded one of the pillars is the pillar of demand and there is a demand in india because 1.3 billion people spread over uh, the 600000 plus villages uh, frugal innovation can we can become the hub of global hub of creating frugal innovation uh, do you see that getting applied and replicated across the rest of the world and do you see the need for frugal innovation to grow even in advanced economies sure uh, that's a very important question indeed i would say that 2020 the entire world is going to wake up to frugal innovation right uh, just to give you an idea because there are two statistics that will blow your mind these statistics are the first one is that 22% of european population is at risk of poverty this was before covid mm. okay so this year we might hit 25 even 30% right and then in america again before covid uh, 60% of americans could not find 500 in case of emergency right this is the richest country but that shows how vulnerable the population is so i'm starting with that because you talk about demand side so the way it's going to emerge in the west is because um people don't have the same level of income that they used to have before and particularly the gen y and gen z the younger generation many of them are listening to us today are harder hit and uh, i believe that they are going to be extremely frugal right that's why for example they don't buy a car they share a car right things like ride sharing so they have this frugal instinct built in as consumers so they are going to essentially therefore fuel the demand for frugal solutions right uh it care uh, of course it could be in healthcare it could be in education it could be in energy it could be in consumer products uh, it could be in finance uh, we are seeing all kind of frugal solutions emerging in the western world whether it's in america or europe to satisfy uh, this growing generation of consumers who are looking to you know live better with less which is they want to have decent product services but they can afford to pay you know a premium like before so that is that's going to happen in the west so that means clearly as indians we need to feel uh, you know proud that wow this is something that the frugal innovation is something that we we created it in india right we practice it and now it's being embraced in the west as well so we should celebrate that but we shouldn't stop there as you said we need to go beyond that and this is where i keep uh, you know saying lately that you know maybe india need to go the next step beyond frugal innovation is what i call a frugal economy this is a whole new economy that we can develop that is more inclusive and more sustainable 
And this economy that I call frugal economy will be built on uh, three major pillars. Uh, the first pillar will be about sharing. So we talked about sharing economy, right? Where, you know, you and I share cars, you know, ride sharing, you know, apartments on Airbnb, that's well known. But we can also imagine uh, Indian, uh, you talked about uh, small, medium businesses, right? Well, small, medium businesses can share their resources with each other, right? So that will be the sharing economy. A good example of that is uh, the startup in India called uh, EM3 Agri-Services, uh, launched by Rotash Mal, the former CEO of Escorts, the tractor company. And they have created a B2B sharing platform that enables uh, farmers to have access on demand to a farming equipment like tractors or agriculture services uh, using an affordable pay-as-you-go uh, payment scheme, right? So this is a way of you know, sharing uh, physical resources, or there is a platform called digitalgreen.org in India that enables farmers to share the best practices, the knowledge with each other. And this is powerful because uh, way back in 2005, the World Bank report saying that if India could share its best practices, its traditional knowledge within India across regions, it can increase the GDP by at least 2%. That's mind boggling, right? So think about sharing, right? Assets, resources. First pillar about sharing. The second pillar, which you are driving with Atal, is a notion of decentralized production. So unlike China, right, which followed a mass manufacturing model with big factories, uh, which basically promotes uh, high volume, but low variety, India can pioneer frugal manufacturing with decentralized production systems with, you know, smaller maker spaces or micro factories in different communities that can cater to the local needs. And in doing so, we have with 3D printing, et cetera, a new manufacturing model of India, from India, that will be uh, low volume, but high variety and high value, right? So that will be the second pillar because India needs a make in India strategy, but you also need a makers in India strategy, right? Which are complementary. And then the third pillar of the frugal economy is what I call regeneration. And this is the notion that, you know, we can't afford to waste stuff. So we need to recycle waste materials. And you know that India, when I grew up, uh, Dr. Mashelkar famously said that, you know, India is the only country where we even repair plastic buckets, right? So we don't throw away anything. We, we preserve resources in them. So the third principle, uh, the pillar is uh, regeneration, which is the idea of, you know, you take the waste materials and every time you recycle, you also create more uh, economic and social value. A good example of that is a startup in Bangalore called uh, Reimagine, launched by Shailaja Rangarajan, which actually takes waste materials and upcycles it into beautiful clothes and home accessories. And what's amazing is that uh, this uh, startup employs uh, women from underprivileged groups to design and uh, craft these beautiful items. In doing so, it also empowers women and creates job opportunities for women because we need to know that uh, according to Boston Consulting Group, if we can empower girls and women to become entrepreneurs, we can increase globally uh, the GDP by uh, 6%, uh, hence uh, generating $5 trillion in economic value, right? And God knows that we need, you know, to empower more women in you know, India as well to become entrepreneurs. So this is what I would say is that this is a golden age of innovation for India and you young people can help build this frugal economy that sits on these three pillars, namely the sharing, uh, economy. The second one is the notion of decentralized production with a lot of maker spaces and uh, the tinkering labs like Atal is creating. And then the third one, which is about uh, region materials, while creating more economic and social value. Great. So uh, frugal innovation uh, is uh, leads to um, you know frugal economy and. Frugal economy is you know, so beautifully explained to you, explained by you as you know something that enables a shared economy, something that en uh, enables a regeneration and reuse, and at the same time, which uh, creates platforms uh, which will be able to uh, one can leverage to to create the shared economy. 
uh, uh, Nabi, we have uh, uh, many questions from the from the uh, participants. So, Ronak, can you uh, please read out a few of the questions from the participants so that Nabi has a chance to be able to address that? Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you so much, Nabi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Nabi can hear. Yes. Uh, so, Nabi, we will be taking some questions from the audience uh, who have put down their uh, questions in either in WhatsApp groups on, or in comment section. Uh, First, uh, first question is from uh, a student uh, from uh, Chandigarh. His name is Sathak, and he asks, "What is one of the most interesting fugal innovations you found in India when you were actually writing your fugal innovation and Jugad innovation books?" Sure. Uh, of course, oh my God, <laughs> there, there, there are so there are so many of them. Of course, uh, this has always been my you know my my favorite one because you know it's such a cute example and 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 so you know the the first beneficiary of this solution was a mother who had lost I believe uh, three of her you know premature babies. So uh, I was very moved right by this example because it really shows how. Uh, if you innovate, you know, meaningfully, uh, it could really bring a lot of joy, right? Because this is a mother that was able to finally save her fourth premature baby, right? With a simple solution. So I think this frugal solution has always had a special place, you know, in my heart. Um, I also uh, uh, like the solution from uh, Selco, uh, which is a company in uh, Bangalore. Uh, that provides uh, solar energy to uh, the poorest of the poorest in some of the remotest place of India. And they have installed uh, solar solutions uh, like solar lamps, etc. in over 250,000 uh, rural households, very, very poor people. But the innovation here, and this is why I give you the example, right? The innovation here is not the technology, right? Uh, Harish Hande is a PhD uh, in, uh, in engineering. But it's not about the fact that he came up with the great technology. It's the business model innovation here, which is amazing. So basically, when he was trying to implement these solar systems in the rural uh, villages in India, uh, he realized people couldn't afford to pay monthly, right? So you know, let's say monthly you have to pay you know uh, uh, thousand rupees. That's a lot of money, right, for for a person. Uh, but what he learned from the, one of his uh, early customers is that uh, they said, look, we cannot pay you 1,000 rupees a month, but we can pay you 10 rupees each day, right? Because life is so unpredictable that, you know, we can only think about paying you on a daily basis. So that allowed him to create a frugal solution, which is uh, today called the uh, Selco, which is a social business, uh, which is in different states in India now. That basically empower, uh, employs young people in villages to actually, you know, uh, charge the solar lamps, distribute them in the different households, and then maintain them, and then they collect a daily payment, right, of ten rupees. So that's very important for you to to understand is that you may come up with a great technology solution, but as you know, it's not enough, right? You have to also create the right business models to make sure that the customer can afford right to buy the solution first of all and then you have to make sure that you have people trained to maintain the solution as well because one of the biggest problem in india is that we come up with the great frugal solutions but they don't they're not maintained properly right because the innovator falls in love with the technology with the solution uh, but they don't pay attention right to the context in which the solution is being deployed so that's why I would say that if you create a frugal solution, spend a lot of time in the field to really connect heart to heart with the customers, observe the context in which it will be used, so you can create a robust, comprehensive solution that basically makes the, the solution viable in the long term. Uh, okay, Navi, thank you so much for this wonderful response. The second question is from a young student. Uh, her name is Latika. Okay, and she's from Andhra Pradesh. And she is asking, how is globalization? Uh, can you hear me? Um... Yes, sir. Um, I think I think uh, it will it will uh, he will reconnect. Yes. 
Okay. Yes, Navi, can you hear us? I can hear you now. Yes, go ahead. Yes. So there is a, this is a question from uh, a young girl named Latika. She is from Andhra Pradesh. And uh, I think I, to be honest, she's quite young to ask this question, but there's no age for any questions. Uh, she's from class eight and she asked, uh, how is the concept of globalization and economic development of a country connected to each other? So globalization, and I, I missed the second word. Economic development of one's country. Okay, so how right. is economic development of India related to the globalization uh, aspect of the whole world? Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's interesting uh, you asked that question because I am a living example of that in a way because uh, I come from a Chetiar family, right? Chetiar is, is a, is a, is a subcast in India that basically established the first trading routes with uh, uh, Myanmar, East Asia, etc. So trade actually is important, right? That's what we call globalization in a way, because the trade, when you trade, you don't just trade goods and services, right? You also trade ideas, right? Uh, knowledge travels too, right? So that's, that's the answer. Basically, globalization essentially helps us become aware of you know, things happening elsewhere and could inspire us. Uh, one of the things that happened, uh, as I said earlier, right, globalization benefited India in many ways because today, today we are talking about innovation, right? Well, the tech innovation, in a way, the story of India at least, right? First, the first wave of technology innovation that emerged in India was exporting IT services, right? So we had Infosys, TCS, etc., who basically, you know, used Indian talent to basically create solutions for the Western world. And in turn, the Western companies essentially had a certain uh, quality standards, right? Certain processes that they brought to India that helped also Indian companies to uh, move up, you know, in terms of sophistication in how to develop these uh, technology solutions. So it was a win-win, right? That's what globalization is about because it helps economic development uh, because today, right, we have a thriving IT industry in India, so it created a lot of jobs, you know, lacks of jobs. But what's beautiful about this story is that, uh, as um, uh, Ramran was saying, is that I believe that, uh, you know, India has to go from looking at young people as uh, job seekers and think about them, how to empower them to become job creators. And that's what happened with the IT industry, right? So first, we were creating solutions for the West. Then we started looking at the domestic market and say, hey, how do we fulfill the needs of the Indian consumers? So that started the second wave of IT startups, namely, you know, the Flipkart, the e-commerce companies, right, that emerged, right? And they were focusing on the local markets, but also they were creating jobs for other young people in India as well. Um, so this is why globalization is very important because it allows Yeah, so I was just concluding that saying that, you know, this is why globalization is important because it really allows you to uh, c compare yourself, right? What's happening in, the, in, the, in other countries? How can we learn from them? How can we exchange ideas as well, et cetera? So that's why, you know, as uh, this year, clearly, as you know, uh, globalization is slowing down. But the good news is that, you know, goods and services may not be able to travel well, but ideas can travel well. And that's why you see in the maker space, right? With the makers, we see these global platforms where makers like, you know, you might be in Andhra Pradesh, but you can be sharing your design files, right? With someone in New York, in Paris, et cetera. And I think that's what we need. Uh, we need to create these global knowledge platforms because we are entering a knowledge economy now. Uh, so even though, right, we cannot trade goods and services because of all the issues going on today, we can share ideas and knowledge with each other, and uh, therefore India can both contribute to the rest of the world in terms of ideas, but also benefit from ideas and knowledge uh, coming from elsewhere.
Wow, this has been an amazing response. I think, I, think um, I just want to add to what uh, Nabi said that, you know, one of the biggest things that has happened is because of the growth of technology and because of it becoming available and affordable, uh, you have increased the ability to locally manufacture, uh, but globally share, you know, practices, knowledge uh, that is very important for the local manufacturing. Uh, take, for example, you want to collaborate between two countries and you are designing even a plant. You know, I'm not talking about just a small sub, but designing a plant. You, you can have augmented virtual reality. Uh, you can have uh, tools and technologies which is enabling uh, two, three or four people from three different parts of the world to actually see that design and modify the design and then create component, you know, make uh, componentize that um, in, in terms of the manufacture and then enable local manufacturing and final assembly. So for the final assembly, uh, it just has to, you have to enable um, only the components getting through. And that is something that is very much possible, you know. So you're going to have, for example, manufacturing today in the COVID-19 crisis, how 3D printing, how IR 4.0 technologies are going to help um, manufacturing at a, at a uh, Kira, you know, small MSME. You don't have to go to a big manufacturing plant to manufacture that because 3D printing can enable that. And of course, when you are putting it all together, you'll need some manufacturing plants and so on and so forth. But you are reducing your supply chain demand to uh, the final assembly and not uh, the individual components. And that is the, the big opportunity that is out there. Absolutely. Uh, so in the interest of time, we will uh, take two questions and both of these, uh, and I think I have 12 or 13 of these questions and uh, uh, it's, I have to be diplomatic and I have to choose some of the questions, unfortunately. Uh, but both of these questions are pretty interesting. First question is from Atul, who is a mentor uh, by profession. And he asks to you, Navi, that what do you uh, what do you think is the role of a mentor in a young student's life, and what and what kind of expectations do you as a uh, as a global innovation leader have from ment Indian mentors on the aspects of innovation, jugad, and entrepreneurship? Sure, uh, I will. Uh, uh, first of all, I invite you to uh, visit a fabulous website. Uh, because in the COVID-19 situation, right, <laughs> even mentorship cannot happen face to face, right? You have to do that online. So there is actually a, a fabulous platform launched by Ravi, my friend. Uh, it's called Mentor Cloud. Huh? It's called Mentor Cloud. You can check it out. Uh, it, they actually found a way to create a virtual environment where you can provide mentorship. Uh, and I think as Ramanan talked about, you know, with virtual reality, etc. Uh, you can exchange with the, your mentees uh, ideas and, and uh, things like that. So Mentor Cloud has become a global platform now for mentorship. So I just wanted to uh, you know, flag that. Um, my take is the following, right? When I see mentorship in Silicon Valley, I lived there for many years, uh, it tends to focus on the what and how, which is essentially you know, uh, giving advice to uh, you know, uh, mentees on what do you want to develop, right? What is the solution you want to develop and how you want to make money, right? That is the business model, right? So it tends to focus on the what you want to do and how you can do it successfully. But I think we Indians, we can go beyond that. Uh, we need to help uh, young people ask two more fundamental questions, which is why and who. The why question is why you want to do it, right? What is the purpose of what you're doing, right? Because Ultimately, uh, you know, we can. Now. Yes. Yes, we are back. Okay. All right. Wow. I think, <laughs> I think God's want us to end soon. <laughs> it's, anyway, so I was saying that there are two more questions that uh, you as mentors can uh, help your uh, young people uh, address. The why question, right? Why are you doing it? What's the purpose 
of what why you're doing this, right? What motivates you? What's the purpose? So the why question is super important because once they find the purpose, right? It gives them a sense of uh, clarity about why they're doing what they're doing and they can stay on course without being discouraged. So that's the why question. But then the fourth question, which is who, right? Who are you? Helping them discover themselves. See, I was lucky because I had some mentors and uh, lately I'm doing it myself, which is the notion of introspection and reflection, becoming more self-aware of who I am, what are my skills, latent skills. Uh, I had mentors who saw potential in me that I wasn't even aware of, right? Uh, so that's the who question, helping young people find more about themselves. Um, I think that's very important, the role of mentors. Um, and I would just end on a slightly kind of provocative way uh, by saying that, remember, mentorship is not a one way street, right? It's a two way street. I actually mentor uh, some, uh, actually I'm mentoring uh, one of the makers in India, uh, Vaibhav Chabra, and I believe that uh, both Ramanan and uh, Ronak know them very, know them very, him very well. So he's, uh, you know, he's not even 30, he's around 30, and I am 50 this year. But what's amazing is that, you know, it's a two way street. See, I mentor him, you know, by connecting him with some companies and bringing some resources, et cetera, but I'm learning a lot from him as well. So this is called reverse mentoring, right? In India, we have this tradition of Guru Sishya Parambara, right? Where we always think that an, old per an older person needs to be mentoring a younger person, right? Transferring knowledge and experience and wisdom. It's not true anymore. We need to think about mentorship in a more lateral, horizontal way, where different generations learn from each other. So think about that as well, right? As you mentor young people, having asking them the question of, you know, why, who, how, and what, also be humble uh, and be willing to learn from young people because they can teach us a lot about, you know, many things, including, you know, digital technologies, but also the kind of talked about, I see that way more developed and well honed in the younger generation. So it's very refreshing for us, our generation to learn from them as well. So great. Uh, uh, I think uh, Ronak, um, uh, we have exceeded the one time. Question. You want to ask one more question or because it's 806 now? Yes, sir. I would like to add one more question because uh, this is a pretty interesting question. Uh, this is coming all the way from Pondicherry, <laughs> and, ah, okay. yeah, and this is uh, and this is a question from Mr. Nagaya G, who is an ATEL in charge or a teacher from one of the schools. He asks, uh, "What do Navi expects us or the ATEL children uh, in these uh, times? What is your expectations from the youngsters of our country, the ATEL students, the makers of our country?" What do you expect as a mentor or as an innovator? Sure. Uh, I actually am, super, first of all, I'm super optimistic and very hopeful about the youngsters uh, in India today, uh, because the one thing I see that uh, our generation didn't have is this incredible self-confidence. Uh, self -confidence. Uh, you are extremely, you know, uh, uh, I would say uh, optimistic, uh, you have a lot more resilience than I've seen in, with my generation. And so my, I start with that because, you know, there is a kind of the soft, the soft side of innovation. There's the hard side. The soft side is really about personality, right? It's, and your generation has an incredible capacity to adapt, learn quickly, uh, uh, collaborate. And so I think that's going to be very valuable for you as innovators moving forward. Um, and the only thing I would ask you is, uh, you know, uh, don't set yourself any limitations. See, I am myself from Pondicherry, right? If 30 years ago you have asked, told me like, you know, I will be one day like, you know, a best-selling author and doing this webinar today, I would never imagine, right? So uh, be very ambitious, be very bold, uh, be also very humble, uh, willing to learn from each other. And then finally, I would say that, um, and this is a kind of a geeky way to end, but it's an important data point. Uh, there is something called the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, these are 17 goals established by United Nations, and Niti Aayog is actually the kind of uh, uh, the, the hub in India to actually think about how India can achieve these 17 sustainable goals 
which focus on making India more inclusive, healthier, and more sustainable with goals like, you know, giving access to clean energy, education, gender parity, uh, boggling fact, in the next decade, 50% of the contribution to the SDGs is supposed to come from India. So what that means is that only if India is sustainable, the entire world will become sustainable. So this is a historic opportunity and a huge responsibility for you young Indians to make sure that, you know, we set India on a sustainable growth trajectory. Okay, so my invitation to you is that, you know, check out the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations and pick one, just one that really speaks to you, right? It could be giving access to clean water, uh, education, energy, you name it. See which one resonates with you and then use your creativity, your, uh, you know, your passion to address that particular, you know, sustainable development goals. And if each of the young people in India can pick one of these 17 SDGs and focus on addressing that, then I'm convinced that, you know, India will not only become an economic superpower, uh, but can also become a role model and a kind of an exemplar of sustainable development that the rest of the world can emulate. Wonderful. Thank you, um, uh, Nabi, for a very, very interesting conversation on uh, various aspects that you touched on. Uh, you touched on what frugal innovation is all about. You touched on what Jugad is all about. Uh, you touched on what goes into making of a great innovator. You know, what are some of the characteristics that uh, people have? You also talked about uh, the importance of uh, uh, enabling leadership in sustainable development goals. Uh, by the way, all our tinkering challenges that we launch and tinkering labs are aligned to sustainable development goals. So today, if you go to any tinkering lab, and if you go and talk to any student, uh, they would be aware of all the 17 sustainable development goals because uh, we encourage that innovations should have some aspect of a sustainable development goal embedded in, in that innovation. And uh, you also uh, shared a number of examples which are very inspiring in terms of, um, you know, uh, how grassroots innovators have, have done innovations uh, taking, you know, local needs into account, uh, seeking local help, addressing local problems. And these are uh, great examples for many of our participants uh, to hear and to emulate. And uh, finally, you also uh, touched on three or four very important things, the ability to learn, uh, unlearn and relearn. You know, uh, learning to learn is very important in today's context. If you, uh, all the knowledge that you have on a particular subject, can become obsolete in a very short period of time because of the rate of advancement of knowledge and the rate of advancement of technology. So how do you keep yourself abreast of all the technologies that are happening? And the Adult Tinkering Labs uh, is one such platform which intends to keep abreast of the latest things that are happening. So for example, uh, the reason why we introduce the 3D printers, robotics and all of that is because that is uh, the basis of most of the solutions which are happening in the world. And now we are going to be introducing AI do-it-yourself kits, blockchain do-it-yourself kits. Uh, we'll be introducing space uh, do-it-yourself kits, space shuttle do-it-yourself kits. Uh, we are introducing 3D design do-it-yourself kits. So what is what it has given is a platform to keep on learning and unlearning what you have learned in the past or relearning something that is that is going to be useful. And uh, this ability to learn to learn is, is so very important. And you also talked about what goes into a good mentor uh, and uh, you know how the mentor should interact with the mentee asking the questions what why who uh, in order to be able to uh, drive the mentorship process along and uh, you have also talked about your own personal journey which is so inspiring to all of us uh, where you have said you can dare to dream and dream to dare and if you do that uh, you are able to achieve uh, things that you thought uh, were impossible or or you never thought was uh, possible at some point in life, uh, point, point of time in your life. And all of these are very, very inspiring. Thank you so much for participating in this particular Thanks, uh, Thank session. Uh, we, I'm sure our interactions will continue and um, we look forward to your active participation in driving some of the initiatives of Atal Innovation Mission forward too. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.
रोनक Thank you so much both for your time. Uh, it has been a wonderful session. I am bombarded with questions, and uh, indeed, I would try to ask some of the questions offline to Navi as well. Uh, I would also like to mention that we have launched a lot of Tinker from Home modules, and for your for your consumptions. And uh, with that, do like, share, and subscribe to the Atal Innovation Missions YouTube channel. Do have a look at all of Navi Ajdo's book, Jugad Innovation, Fugal Innovation, and many more. And as always. Happy tinkering.